Welcome to the course two phase flow and heat transfer. Today we will be dealing with the fifth lecture of this course and this course this lecture is about separated flow model. Okay. Now, if you remember in our first lecture in our uh, first lecture whenever we have given the nomenclatures we have told you about the drift flux uh, velocity drift velocities and that we have used in our last lecture drift flux model. Here in separated flow model we will be considering that both the phases are actually flowing separately and there is relative velocity existing between these two. Unlike your drift flux model in separated flow model we will be trying to capture the mass momentum and energy equations for the phases separately. So, let us first see that what we will be learning in this lecture. So, at the end of, end of this lecture we will understand the calculation of pressure drop in a pipeline holding separated flow. So, basically we will be giving you how to calculate the pressure drop as we have shown you in case of homogeneous flow. We will obtain pressure drop in a heated tube. So, from the adiabatic situation we will be converting into heated tube situation. So, uh, heat is coming from the periphery of the tube. So, in that case phase change how it, uh, take, uh, it, can, take, it can be taken care of in separated flow model that we will be learning. We will recognize Lockhart Martinelli parameters and evaluate its values from Martinelli Nielsen charts. Also, we will be practicing a sum at the end of this lecture. So, let us now go to a, a situation where separated flow uh, is occurring. So, here once again just like your drift flux model, I have shown you a schematic diagram of a pipe carrying separated flow. So, basically you can find out separated flow is applicable uh, for uh, situations like stratified flow. So, here I have shown you a stratified situation for liquid and gas. So, liquid is at the downward side and gas is at the upward side and here to make it generalized we have considered the pipe is changing its diameter as well as we have considered that this is making some angle with horizontal which is theta. right? So, uh, let me explain the other uh, terminologies over here. So, you can see here we have considered that mass flow rate for the liquid is Wf and uh, velocity for the liquid is Uf. So, whenever it is exiting from the pipe the mass flow rate changes to Wf plus dWf and velocity changes to Uf plus dWf. Similarly, for the gaseous phase Wg and Ug is at the entry and Wg plus dWg and Ug plus dUg is at the exit. Now, let us talk about pressure as we know that pressure is dropping down. So, at the inlet we will be finding out that the pressure is P plus dP and obviously, at the exit it will be dropping down to P. Here, what we have considered that the area occupied by the liquid phase is AF and area occupied by the gaseous phase is AG. Right? So, this is the interface between the uh, phases. So, from uh, across this interface you will be finding out that we are having the interfacial forces DSF in the liquid phase and DSG in the gaseous phase. Also, we are having uh, mass transfer uh, due to phase change. So, what we have considered that dWg amount of mass is actually uh, being accepted by the gaseous phase and dWf amount of mass is actually accepted by the liquid phase. Apart from that we have also considered the frictions. So, here uh, we are having uh, frictions dFf and uh, its perpendicular direction is nF dashed and if we consider the gravity in the vertical direction. Uh, so, you will be finding out its components are NF and DFF. Similarly, for the gaseous phase we are having the uh, friction factor as uh, DFG dashed okay, and its component in the uh, horizontal and vertical directions are DFG. Okay. So, uh, with this let us try to construct uh, the momentum and uh, continuity equations for uh, separated flow. So, first I will be showing you uh, the mass conservation equation. So, you see here in the mass conservation equation we have uh, added up both the mass conservation equations uh, for gaseous and liquid phase. So, del del z of a f rho f u f okay, plus a g rho g into u g is equals to 0. Here what we have considered d w g and d w f in the individual equations del del z of a f rho f u f will be equals to w f d w f 
and del del z of a g rho g and u g will be equivalent to your uh, del uh, w g right. So, whenever we add those two then you will be finding out this two term will be cancelling out and finally, you will be getting the mass conservation equation like this. Okay. Now, all of we know that uh, A f rho f and u f is nothing but w f and A g rho g and u g is equals to w g. So, we can write down w f plus w g is equal to a constant term and we write down that one as overall mass flow rate w. Right? Now, let us go to the momentum equation. So, just like our homogeneous flow model, we will try to write down the momentum equation as minus del p del z is equivalent to addition of 3 pressure drops. So, first one is uh, occurring due to the friction, second one is occurring due to the acceleration due to the gravity or buoyancy and third one is occurring due to the acceleration A. Right? Now, already in uh, uh, homogeneous flow model we have described that how the frictional pressure drop uh, comes into picture. Here also I have shown that minus del p del z at for the friction can be written as 1 by a d f by d z where f is nothing but the frictional force. Okay. And if you try to write down this frictional force in terms of the uh, shear stress and the perimeter, then we have already shown this can be converted to a simplified equation like this. 2 f g square specific volume divided by the tube diameter. Okay. This already we have proved in the homogeneous flow model uh, lecture. Now, uh, for the uh, buoyancy part that means gravitational part you can write down minus del p del z at z is equals to 1 minus alpha into rho f plus alpha into rho g into g into sin theta. The first part 1 minus alpha into rho f into g sin theta that comes from the uh, liquid momentum equation and alpha into rho g into g sin theta that comes from the gaseous momentum equation. The most important and vital term is del p del z at a. So, you see del p del z at a will be this expression. So, let us try to understand how this expression came. So, let me show you that how uh, uh, this uh, acceleration part comes into picture. In your momentum equation, if you see the acceleration part due to inertia will be like this 1 by a a f into rho f into u f square. This is for the liquid part and a g into rho g into u g square. This is for the gaseous part. Now, let us see how this can be simplified. So, what we can do 1 by a here a f square rho f square u f square divided by a f rho f plus a g square rho g square u g square divided by a g into rho g. Right? So, here you see a f rho f and u f that can be written as g f g f square and a f we can write as a into 1 minus alpha into rho f plus this one once again a g rho g and u g can be written as g g okay, into a g can be written as a into alpha. Okay. So, this we get multiplied by 1 minus 1 by alpha. Right. Now, here we know j f can be written as j square into 1 minus x whole square okay, okay. in a similar fashion j g can be written as g square into x square from the definition of the mass quality. Okay. So, this becomes a into alpha into rho g multiplied by 1 by a. Okay. So, we get over here you see g square we can take common okay, g square by a and then 1 minus x whole square by a into 1 minus alpha rho f plus x square a alpha rho g. Right. So, this type of term we will be getting from the inertial pressure drop. So, here similar type of things I have shown you over here you see uh, this one is 
W square by A, okay, W square by A, okay, by the way, a small nomenclature problem is here, this will be actually W, okay, this will be actually W, so it can be replaced by W, please make the necessary corrections, so this can be replaced by W, so here this will be coming as W. So, you can find out it is becoming W square by A into 1 minus X whole square divided by A into 1 minus alpha into rho F plus of X square by A into alpha into rho G. So, same term I can I can show you over here. So, you see W square by A del del Z because this is dp dz. So, del del Z will be remaining over here. Uh, 1 by a into x square. Now, this rho g has been written as 1 by v g and over here rho f has been written as 1 by v f. Okay. So, this is the necessary term for accelerational pressure drop. Okay. So, all these three terms will be coming uh, into picture in the momentum equation and here you can find out momentum equation can be written as minus del p del z equals to summation of the frictional uh, gravitational and accelerational pressure drop, right. Next, let us uh, try to find out the frictional pressure drop. So, already we know uh, that uh, <laughs> frictional pressure drop uh, can be written as minus del p del z, okay, frictional for two phase. Now, uh, what we can do, there are four different uh, situations what we can assume. We can assume that in place of the two phase inside the pipeline, only single phase flow is occurring, SF means single phase and we can calculate the value of the friction factor considering the single phase fluid flow, okay. SF means single phase fluid flow okay. and then multiply with a parameter over here which is phi F O square. Now, F O symbolizes fluid only. Okay. So, what we can do the two phase friction factor two phase uh, pressure drop we can calculate using the single phase liquid only or fluid only pressure drop multiplied by a parameter which is phi f o square. Okay. Now, calculating why we are doing so? Because calculating single phase liquid friction factor is very easy because we know what is the uh, what are the parameters that means density and viscosity for uh, single phase liquid. So, quickly we can calculate what is the Reynolds number and based on the Reynolds number we can go for either 64 by Re or Blasius equation. Okay. So, we can find out for turbulent and uh, laminar regime. Right. Now, we need to know this parameter phi F O square okay, to relate this two phase friction factor with the single phase fluid only friction factor. So, as I have told you that single phase friction factor can be written as 2 into F F O fluid only friction factor. So, this you need to calculate using the liquid properties only Reynolds number will be calculated based on liquid properties only okay. and then rest things will be similar G square into V F by D. Okay. Now, this this function already I have shown you in the previous slide. You see here I have shown you 2 F into G square V by D. So, in case of a single phase liquid only this F will be converted into F O F F O and in case of this V in case of uh, this V will be writing V F. Okay. So, same thing we have written over here and this multiplier is remaining over here. Okay. So, somehow uh, we need to know this multiplier then using this single phase liquid only friction uh, force we can find out the two phase friction force. So, this is uh, uh, one idea that liquid phase through the tube if we consider we can find out the two phase friction force also. Okay. Similarly, we have considerations like gas phase through the tube. So, what we have done over here you see here uh, two phase friction force can be calculated using uh, single phase gas only friction force multiplied by a factor phi g only. Okay, phi g only square. So, this is the multiplier somehow we need to find out this phi g o. Okay. There are so many things I will be uh, telling you later on how to find out this phi's. Okay. Now, if it is if we are considering that the whole pipeline is occupied by the gaseous phase. So, obviously, the friction factor or the friction force will be 2 into f g o gas only. So, friction factor will be calculated based on the gas properties like uh, densities and viscosities as well as we are having the gaseous density over here or gaseous uh, specific volume over here into picture okay, multiplied by phi g o square. 
Now two more uh, considerations are, are there also, here in this first two we have considered the whole pipeline is occupied by the liquid and gas, here in the second, third and fourth we will be considering that uh, two phase flow is there inside the pipeline, but we are only interested in the gaseous phase or liquid phase. So, here the consideration is not like this that uh, the whole pipeline is occupied by the gas, two phase is there, but we are only calculating from the gaseous portion. So, let us see what happens over here. So, friction uh, force for the two phase can be written as del P del Z friction force for the gas part only. So, remember this is not gas only, this is gas part only and then you have a multiplier phi g square. Okay. So, this is not phi g only, this is phi g square. Okay. So, here you can find out that we have to uh, find out the friction factor as 2 f g. Now, the mass whatever we have to write down that now will not be becoming g, because we are not considering the whole pipeline is occupied by the uh, gaseous phase over here, we are only considering the gaseous portion. So, gaseous mass we need to take, so gaseous mass is nothing but capital G small g, g g. So, so that g g can be written as g square into x square, because we know that g x is equals to g g. Right? So, this gives you the friction factor for the uh, gaseous uh, phase, uh, gaseous portion only multiplied by this factor. Remember this F g will be also considered based on the gaseous phase properties. So, Reynolds number you have to calculate based on the gaseous phase properties. Similarly, we can go for liquid portion. So, here you see we will be only considering the liquid portion over here. So, minus del P by del Z friction factor at liquid portion only, then phi F square, phi F is the liquid portion only. This is not only uh, considering that uh, the whole pipeline is occupied by liquid, this is only the portion of the liquid we are considering. right? So, the friction factor will be 2 into F f. So, all this F f will be calculated based on the Reynolds number calculated with the liquid properties and then G f will be written over here. So, g f square, so g f we can write down as g square into 1 minus x whole square multiplied by v f by d into phi f naught. Now, if you compare these equations, so you can correlate between the uh, multipliers phi f o, phi g o, phi g and phi f. So, this is very simple. So, if you just compare then you will be finding out phi f o square will be actually phi g o square into v g by v f into phi f g o by f f o. Right. In the, uh, in the similar fashion, we can also equate this fluid only or gas only parameters with gas portion and liquid portion uh, multipliers. So, phi f o square can be written as phi f square into 1 minus x whole, whole square into f f by f f o. Similarly, phi f o square can be written as phi g square into x square into v g by v f into f g by f f o. So, this equation will be coming just by comparing this, this side. So, left hand sides are all equal. So, if you compare the right hand sides, you will be getting these equations. right? Next, let us try to see that if we try to put all these three factors, so friction factor, frictional pressure drop, uh, uh, gravitational pressure drop and acceleration pressure drop in uh, the final equation, then we will be getting minus del p del z equals to h 1 by h 2. Now, let us try to identify different portions in this H 1 and H 2. So, in H 1 obviously, you can find out this is coming from the friction factor. So, we have only considered the fluid only assumption. So, if you are going for gas only or liquid portion or gas portion accordingly this portion needs to be modified. Okay. Any, any op op option you can take. Okay. Then here you see the last term is due to the acceleration due to the buoyancy part 1 minus alpha into rho f plus 1 minus uh, alpha into rho g into g sin theta. So, this term I have already shown you over here 1 minus alpha into rho f plus alpha into rho g into g sin theta. Now, rest terms whatever we are seeing over here, these are actually coming from your accelerational part. Now, let us discuss about the accelerational part. Here you see the accelerational part we are having d d z of some term. Now, here we can find out we are having four different types of terms. So, one is a, so obviously a is varying with respect to z, another one is alpha, so obviously alpha is varying with respect to z. We are having x quality, mass quality, this is also varying with respect to your z as well as we can have variation of v g and v f with respect to 
uh, not z with respect to p as p is varying inside the pipeline uh, whenever you advance forward we will be finding out that vg and vf value will be also changing. So, we will be having partial derivative of 4 different terms. Okay. Now, as I have mentioned that this vg and vf is actually a function of pressure. So, whenever you are doing ddz uh, basically we have to multiply del p at the denominator and numerator we have to get del del p of and then dp dz as a multiplier. So, once you have dp dz in the right hand side left hand side also we are having dp dz. So, dp dz will be coming at the uh, bottom side or whenever you are finding out the dp dz. So, you will be finding out in the last expression if you see in h 2 we are having 1 okay, plus this term. So, this term is actually due to the differentiation with respect to pressure. You see this x square by, by alpha remains over there. So, this is ddp of vg. Okay. So, we had vg. Once we do ddp, so we will be having ddp of vg. Similarly, here we are having ddp of vf. Okay. Now, whenever we are making the derivative with respect to pre, with respect to pressure, we know that alpha is also a parameter. So, we have to find out del del alpha del 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 p of alpha and then once again del del alpha of this term. So, here what we have done kept the uh, 1 minus x square into v f as constant and we have made the derivative of 1 minus alpha here 1 minus alpha with respect to alpha. So, it becomes 1 minus alpha whole square with a minus sign okay. and then uh, 1 minus alpha if you make the derivative with respect to alpha this will give another minus sign. So, minus minus becomes plus. So, we will be getting a plus sign over here. right? On a similar fashion if you make the derivative of this term, uh, this term means x square alpha into v g okay, with respect to alpha then you will be getting minus alpha square minus 1 by alpha square and x square v g will be remaining like this. Okay. So, this term is actually coming for the uh, variation of d d p of the uh, of the acceleration part. Now, rest terms uh, that means we are having few more terms also over here. So, apart from v g we are also having x, a and alpha. So, those variations are over here. First one is over here which is nothing but derivative of the x. So, what we have done? We had d d z of the terms. So, we have done d x d z and then d d x of this term. So, if you do d d x of x square you will be getting 2 x. If you do d d x of 1 minus x square you will be getting 2 into 1 minus x with a minus sign because 1 minus x will be giving you minus 1. And then finally, if you do this uh, d d alpha, so this is the variation of alpha. So, if you see over here 1 minus x whole square into v f and then once again for 1 minus alpha square what we have done, uh, it was 1 minus alpha. So, 1 minus alpha whole square with a minus sign and 1 minus alpha will be getting once again differentiated. So, that gives another minus sign. Okay. So, minus minus becomes plus over here and for this term okay, x square v g by alpha square it becomes x square v g by alpha square with a minus sign. Right. And the last term over here this is due to the uh, d d z of a okay, because area will be also changing with respect to z. Right. So, these three terms are not having d p d z involved in this, but this term is having d p d z involved. So, once we write down or add all those terms, so this term will be going in the left hand side and d p z if, d z if you take common then it will be 1 plus this one. So, as a result the overall d p d z we can write down as h 1 by h 2. Okay. So, this is the expression with h 1 and this is the expression with h 2. So, here in h 1 this is once again from the fiction, this is once again from the buoyancy, rest 3 terms are coming from your uh, acceleration and in h 2 uh, this last term involving g square and this, uh, and this term it is coming from once again acceleration. Right? Next let us try to see uh, what happens if we, if we go for a uniformly heated tube of diameter d. Okay. So, what we have done uh, from this expression we will try to find out uh, the, what is the pressure drop for a finite amount of length whenever heat is given from the periphery. Okay. So, let us try to see over here. Uh, so, what we have done basically before coming over here uh, I will be showing you uh, that in H 2 uh, this term is actually 
equals to or nearly equals to 0 for most of the liquids whatever we have in reality like water, air and all these things. So, what we have done uh, whenever we have derived uh, the uh, pressure drop in a heated tube we have actually neglected this term. So, H 2 becomes 1 ok. As well as you see in this in this case as well as in this case you see this term whatever we have del alpha del x p and then this one this also goes to 0 ok. So, what we have done we have also made we have also made this term is equals to 0 we have made this term also equals to 0 right. We are having over here del A by del Z. So, in case of a pipeline, we will find out this can be also made to 0 because uh, in case of a uh, circular pipeline uh, without any cross sectional change, we will be finding out d A d Z equals to 0. So, we left to we are left with first term, this term and this term. So, we have to integrate these things. So, let us integrate uh, for a uh, finite length. So, finite length uh, that can be a pipeline having L length. So, we are giving over here the L length where the uh, quality mass quality is changing from 0 to x. Okay. So, for the first term the frictional part you can find out this is a constant term. Okay, this is not varying uh, with respect to your x because we have taken fluid only assumption over here. <coughs> Okay. Then uh, here you see, but the friction, uh, but the multiplier phi f o will be dependent on x. So, 1 by x into integration of 0 to x phi f o square into d x that uh, remains in the integration. Okay. This somehow we need to find out. Okay. Then for the accelerational term, if you see uh, we had this term. So, if you do the integration with respect to x, this becomes 2 x integration d x. So, that means x square. Okay. So, here we have got x square v g, we have taken v f common, so v f came over here. Okay. On the other hand side, on the other hand side second term will be giving you 2 into 1 minus x integration and d x if you write down the after performing integration you will be getting 1 minus x whole square with a positive sign. Okay. So, that we have kept over here 1 minus x whole square as we have taken v f common we cannot see v f over here, okay. v f as multiplier over here. Right. Then for the accelerational part you see L g into sin theta. Now, where from this L is coming? You see if we integrate it over dx, so we will be finding out that we are having alpha inside this. Right. So, alpha is varying uh, when, when you progress in the tube. So, what we need to do? We need to, we need to go for uh, variation of x okay, in place of z. So, what we do? Del x by del z into d d x. So, we give d x over here and del z by del x we keep outside. Now, as I have told that pipeline is uh, starting from uh, uh, length equals to 0 to length equals to L and whenever the uh, uh, quality is changing from x equals to 0 to x equals to L. So, you will be finding out this del z by del x becomes L minus 0 by x minus 0. So, this is L by x is coming over here in picture. Right. So, this is also another term which we need to uh, find out somewhere. Okay. So, the final expression if we see over here after putting this limit in the second term accelerational term we will be getting minus 1 over here because if you put x equals to 0. So, this term cancels, but this term remains. Okay. So, this x equals to 0 remains. So, we will be finding out this is becoming minus 1. Okay. So, this is the final expression for uh, uniformly heated tube diameter, uh, uniformly heated tube of having diameter d uh, in case of the pressure drop. So, pressure drop you see still we are having two integrations okay, which we need to take care of. Now, how to take care of these integrations? So, first I will be showing you different charts over here. All these charts are actually given by uh, Martinelli and Nielsen. Um, as I have already told you different uh, parameters are uh, obtained by Lockhart and Martinelli. So, here we, ha we are finding out uh, the values using Martinelli-Nielsen chart. So, let us see first one we will be finding out if we know the value of uh, x how to find out alpha. Okay. You see in this chart what we are having in this chart in abscissa we are having x okay. and in uh, ordinate we are having two things actually. In the lower portion we are having the value of phi, phi is nothing but the Lockhart Martinelli parameter phi whatever we have seen in case of the fluid only, liquid only, fluid part and gas part. Okay. 
and here we are having in the upper part we are having the value of 1 minus alpha in this side, alpha in this side. Okay. Now, let us say you know your value of x, somehow you know your value of x. So, what you will be doing? You will be following from here, what is the value of x? You will be following from here. First, if you move up and if you uh, intersect uh, this line okay, in this curve and from here if you read in the left hand side, you will be getting the value of 1 minus alpha. Similarly, from a particular value of x, if you move up and intersect this curve which is actually alpha curve and then move in the right hand side direction, you will be getting the value of alpha. So, uh, this chart is made in such a fashion that this side and this side, they are actually uh, summation will become always 1. Right. Now, after getting the value of alpha, next task is to get the value of the Lockhart Martindale parameters. So, what we have done over here, uh, from this side we are having 4 different lines, from this side also we are having 4 different lines. Okay. Now, these lines are actually for different combinations. Okay. So, you can see the lines are like this, first one the upper one is phi g t t, second one is phi g t v, third one is phi g v t and fourth one is phi g v v. Okay. Now, what are this uh, t t v v? Gas g symbolizes obviously gas we can understand. Then T T symbolizes both the phases gas and liquid are in turbulent situation. Okay. Similarly, T V symbolizes liquid is in turbulent situation, but gas is in uh, laminar situation. Similarly, V T symbolizes liquid is in laminar situation, but gas is in turbulent situation and finally, phi G V V symbolizes that both liquid and gas are in laminar situation. Right. So, once you know your value of x and you know that what are the individual conditions for both the phases liquid and uh, gas. So, you can choose which curve you need to take and find out the value of the friction uh, Lockhart Martinelli parameter from the ordinate. Right. Now, if you are applying the gas only uh, or uh, gas portion uh, equations, then you will be taking uh, these curves and if you are taking liquid portion uh, friction factors, uh, Lockhart Martinelli parameters, then you will be taking this curve. So, here we are having phi f t t, phi f v t, phi f t v and phi f v v respectively. Right? Okay. Then let us discuss the next chart. So, uh, if we are having uh, phase change, so Martinelli Nielsen model, what we will be understanding over here, you see this is actually gamma. So, what is this gamma? Gamma is nothing but whatever you have seen in this brace. Okay. So, x square into v g by alpha into v f plus 1 minus x square by 1 minus alpha minus 1. Okay. So, this has been given over here in the ordinate and in abscissa we are having the pressure. Okay. So, in the pipeline we are having some average pressure, so that pressure will be giving over here. Right. And here we are having different lines for exit quality. So, at the pipeline exit, if you know the exit quality, so uh, by knowing the pressure value and exit quality value, you can find out what is the magnitude of this term which will be coming into picture while calculation of the pressure drop. So, this term will be coming into picture. Right. In the similar fashion, uh, in the in the in the right hand side curve, if you see, we are having in ordinate one by x zero to x integration of phi f o square into dx. If you remember your delta p, there we had in this bracket one by x zero to x phi f o square dx. Right. So this term is actually can be found out using that curve. Martinelli Nielsen curve once you know the pressure and the exit quality. So, these are the exit quality lines varying from 1 percent to 100 percent. Okay. So, uh, both these unknowns in the in the in the accelerational part and the frictional part you can find out using Martinelli Nielsen model. Right. Okay. Next, let us try to see if you are having some adiabatic situation. Okay. So, in case of adiabatic, that means the phase change is not involved over there. In case of adiabatic situation, you can find out these curves will be important. So, if you have to find out the Lockhart Martinelli parameter for fluid only, then you will be using this curve. In the abscissa of this curve, we are having the mass quality x, and uh, here we are having different lines for the pressures. So, once again if you know the uh, mass quality x and the pressure, you can find out that which one is the corresponding uh, uh, Lockhart Martinelli parameter phi f o square. Right? 
In the right hand side, I have shown you another curve once again given by uh, Martinelli and Nielsen. So, here if you know uh, the mass quality x, you can find out the void fraction alpha from the ordinate. Okay. So, here you see we are having lots of lines like this for different pressures. So, you need to know the mass quality x and the pressure to find out what is the void fraction from the ordinate. So, these curves, these two curves will be actually used for adiabatic condition and previous two curves will be used for phase change conditions. Let us uh, see a problem statement related to uh, separated flow model. The problem is like this, a vertical tube of 3 meter length and 10 millimeter diameter is carrying water vapor mixture. The inlet quality of the water vapor mixture is 0 0.05, total mass flow rate through the tube is 0 0.1 kg per second. The two phase mixture pressure is 46.941 bar, initial 2 meter of the tube is heated with wrapped electrical coil while which supply uh, 10 kilowatt of the heat to the tube, rest 1 meter is adiabatic. So, we are having two sections, a heated section and uh, adiabatic section. Calculate the pressure drop using Martinelli Nielsen correlations. Okay. So, first what we will be doing at this pressure, we will be finding out the properties like saturation temperature, uh, liquid and gas viscosity, liquid and gas specific volume and the enthalpies. Okay. Now, as we have done in homogeneous flow model, let us find out what is the quality at the exit of 2 meter of the pipeline. So, I will be finding out by Q by W by IFG plus Xi because here at the inlet we had some quality okay, 0 0.05. So, we can find out that at 2, uh, 2 meter it is becoming 0 0.652. Now, if we assume that linear variation of the quality, then what we can do? We can find out what was the length responsible for increasing the quality from 0 to 0 0.05. Okay. So, that if we find out over here, let us take that length as L dash. So, L dash by L 1 plus L dash is equals to x inlet by x 2 meter. So, you will be finding out L dash is equals to 0 0.166 meter. Okay. So, next uh, let us find out few important parameters like g, g will be uh, 4 w by pi d square 127.4 and then uh, Reynolds number for fluid only portions g d by mu f. So, this is coming as turbulent, okay. friction factor we will be calculating using Blasius like this, okay. this is coming as 0 0.00752. Now, uh, uh, at 0.652 quality, let us find out from the charts uh, what are the values of the uh, 1 by x into 0 to x phi f o square into d x. We require the pressure information for that, we get the value will be from 16. So, this chart we will be using, okay. this chart we will be using for this one. So, we will be finding out the value from the chart as 16. Similarly, we will be finding out what is the frictional force for 0 to 0.6 Remember, our pipe is varying from 0 0.05 to 0 0.652. So, this we are finding out for the overall. So, if you multiply this one with this multiplication factor 16, we get this one 1079. Now, we have to subtract uh, the initial portion that means 0 to uh, 0 0.05. Okay, 0 to 0.05 which is the hypothetical length. So, we have found out uh, this friction factor once again with the exit quality of 0 0.05 at the same pressure that comes out to be 2.9. Once again, this has been found out from Martinelli Nielsen chart. So, we will be finding out delta P f for the fictitious pipe is becoming 14.99. So, ultimately for our real pipe which is varying from quality 0 0.05 to 0 0.652 that becomes 1064 Newton per meter square. Okay. Now, let us see for the acceleration part. So, uh, with 0 0.652 quality at this pressure, we will be getting gamma is equals to 15. So, that we are calculating using this chart. Okay. So, gamma we are calculating using pressure and exit quality uh, parameters. So, you can find out that is becoming 15 and for the hypothetical part, it is becoming 1.2. So, for the real part, if you see the acceleration pressure drop, that becomes g square v f multiplied by this uh, subtraction between these two factor 286 Newton per meter square. Then for uh, the gravitational part, we can find out that uh, uh, for this uh, exit quality and this pressure alpha will become 0.93. So, those we will be calculating using this this curve, okay, adiabatic situation curve. So, you will be getting that for those conditions for the whole pipe, fictitious pipe plus real pipe, this becomes 1509.4. Okay. This portion we are getting from alpha, we are getting from your uh, chart, which is 0.93. And for the fictitious part, alpha is 0.55. 
So, for the both parts uh, fictitious part and the whole part we are getting these two. So, subtraction between these two will be my actual pressure drop due to acceleration. So, altogether we are getting this is the uh, total uh, force uh, total frictional uh, pressure drop for uh, the uh, heated pipe length. Okay, now, this is for the adiabatic section this will be very simple. So, we have to once again find out phi F O using your uh, phi F O and alpha using your Martinelli Nielsen chart using these two charts phi F O and alpha we will be finding out. Okay. Then finally, we will be finding out the friction factor, acceleration factor and z factor. So, this is 1068 coming out to be because we have found out F O and alpha. Okay. Acceleration part comes out to be 327 gravitational part comes out to be 679. So, altogether for the uh, non heated part it becomes 2075. So, if you add delta P L 1 and delta P L 2 it becomes 4339.16 Newton per meter square for the whole pipe. Okay, let us summarize in this lecture we have discussed about the pressure drop uh, how to uh, obtain the pressure drop for separated flow. We have also shown how to get the Lockhart Martinelli parameters and the use of Martinelli Nielsen chart and at the end of this we have practiced a sum where we have shown the adiabatic situations as well as the heated situation. Right? To test your understanding let us see the questions identify the correct relations we are having 4 relations I think you can identify the correct one the answer is part A. Similarly, separated flow model is valid for 4 options we are having bubbly slug stratified and droplet correct answer is stratified. Third one, which graph will be helpful to derive the friction factors in separated flow model? Baker, Martinelli Nielsen, Hewitt and Roberts and Moody's chart. By now obviously, you have understood that correct answer is Martinelli Nielsen. Right? With this, I will be ending this lecture. Thank you.